I was on a walk when I found a cave. My curiosity got the best of me. And I ended up here. These are the Forsaken Fables of Valgaro. A flash of bright light hit my eyes. I wasn't in that cave anymore. I found myself next to a small pond. But I recognized nothing. I was surrounded by chalky hills with some redwoods off in the distance. I found a strange creature with spikes on its tail. It seemed peaceful, but I definitely didn't want to provoke it. And there were lots of bushes, but they fell to pieces when you took the berries. Then I picked up a stone, but the rest were all stuck to the ground. Then as I tried and failed to budge any of them, it sunk in. I was in a world where half the things were glued down and the other half were not. So the question was, who had the glue? I'd get no answers if I didn't look. But where would I start? The entire world seemed filled with strange creatures. From the waters to the sky. And this one just pooped right in front of me. It had me rattled. But that much confidence would have any man intimidated. And while I was still a bit shook from that, I saw the flash of a tail going wild in the distance. I tried to see what was going on. A feathered beast was attacking that spike-tailed creature. But then before I knew it, he changed his sights for me. That sting of death really hurt. But I awoke from it. Only I was still next to that feathered beast. So he just did it again. That old familiar sting. Quite the cycle I found myself in. I came to on the other side of the pond this time though. It looked like I was safe for now. And not everything wanted to eat me. This world had soft and noble creatures in it too. These ones were small, but they must have some hidden inner strength that made them so calm in a place like this. I did find out how aggressive they could be when I ate some rare flowers though. None of the dinos seemed to like when I did that. So I made a pick to defend myself. And extract some resources as well. Then I figured why stop there? So I made a hatchet too. And I ate measly berries to sustain myself. But as I was thinking about adding fish to my menu, I had to run to avoid being added to a raptors. I had to think of other food sources. It was a tough decision though. The reality was that I was facing dangers on all sides, from hunger and thirst to claws and teeth. And some of these dangers were getting T-Rex size big. I'd find myself running from those, just to bump into an Allosaur, or worse, one of those feathered beasts. All while trying to sustain and maintain, and eating more of those measly berries. And at one point, I found a dead raptor, so I got some much needed meat. I suppose everything here was just looking for its next meal, but I couldn't live that way. I had to improve, because I had to rise up and get back. So I figured I should start with more resources. Then I found making lots of cooking pots helped me profoundly understand this place more for some reason. And with that understanding, I knew I'd need to make some friends of these beasts. Not just for assistance in survival, but I think I could use some guidance and companionship along the way too. That slow-mo run needed no guidance though. Nailed it. I spotted a level 90 raptor tracking me from behind some rocks. 
and managed to snag it with a bola. I had four trank arrows, but they weren't enough to take it down. So I punched it in the butt a few more times to knock it out. It would seem punching butts was an important skill to master in this strange world. Then I took down that pooping moth. I need the meat to earn the friendship and forgiveness of that raptor. But first I took a drink of water because I was thirsty. And water is good for you. Then I got back to that raptor. She ate all the meat and it would appear she was on my side now. She said she'd defend me to the death and that her name was Rain. She had a pretty cool look up against the sky. Then we got her a saddle and we worked quite well together. She was a natural at navigating this harsh world and I felt like with her around, I'd never go hungry again. I explained to her my situation and why I had to get back and that I had a feeling whoever had the glue would know how to get me there. She said the wise mammoths might know what to do and they might know who has the glue. Her and I had only just met but she seemed determined to help me. So it was time to get on the move. But as we went on our way, I realized I'd need a wagon to keep rain light on our feet. So I gathered the materials, placed it down, and hitched it up. And it couldn't have been better timing, because just as I finished, I noticed a pack of aloes had wandered closer. So we got out of there. And the next stop would be... The Land of the Mammoths. But getting there wouldn't be easy we'd still have our share of run-ins with danger. And we'd have to know when to avoid it completely. But through all the trials, we could see we were getting closer as we spotted mammoths up on the ridge. We weren't ready for the dangers up there just yet, though. I'd heard a wise man say something about low-level trikes once. And this level 20 should help us with our preparations. I could just taste those narco berries. But while that trike was taming, Rain told me that trikes and raptors are eternal enemies. They don't get along. But I told her we were all on a team now. The protection that she offered me would have to extend to this trike here too. I called the trike Tranquilina, as she was pretty chill about the whole thing. and she harvested those narco berries faster than me or Rain could ever dream. Then Rain scavenged on an aloe carcass to show her strength too. She still seemed hesitant, as if doubting she could ever help a trike. Then I said goodbye to the beach and readied myself for new dangers in the land of the mammoths. They were huge and also very woolly. Felt like I'd need a lot of tranks to take one of these down and get it on my side. And I'd probably need a lot more tools and weapons made of metal too. But when I found the metal, I could see a pack of hyenodons hiding amidst the boulders. So I carefully got a little bit just to get me started for now. And I also needed wood. But as I gathered that, I noticed even more hyenodons. It seems like they might have been stalking me. I'd need to get a trailer built soon. And to top it off, I was getting thirsty too. I had to focus, as I had enough materials now. This trailer would offer me some much needed shelter. And conveniently a place where I could get some work done while remaining mobile. And it sure did look nice. I put a forge down in it so I could start smelting metal right away but I still really needed some water, so I headed to a nearby lake. And then after taking a much needed drink, I was overcome by a thought. What if I never find the one who does this gluing? Would I be stuck here forever?
Then I went back to my duties. I'd need to make a space to tinker with some metal to make better tools. I placed it down just right. And finally got myself a metal pick. But I had this strange feeling. Everything was too still. But I'm sure it was nothing. It wasn't. <laughs>